beefing it up. I'm beefing it up. I like <laughs> beef. We need some meat in our diet, man. Yeah. Cows. Oh, cows. Speaking of cows. <sighs> My <Me> mum's fine. <laughs> That's cruel. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going to go with that. Uh, at least you went for your mother and not mine. Yeah, that would have been... Cruel. That would have been rude. Yeah, but funny. <laughs> yeah. Considering she's our only fan. She's our only listener now. Yeah, exactly. So So how are we doing, Andy? We're doing fine. Yeah, this is episode 28 and um, yeah. Have you heard about the um, the feminists attacking our friend Joss Whedon? Is this uh, hot news? Yeah. He's Femin- at- feminists? Yeah, he's come off Twitter. Um, oh. You know, in Age of Ultron, where um, Bruce Banner and um, and Natasha Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson yeah Scarlett Johansson are having that little talk and he's like there's no future here and she was like well back in the day when I was being trained to be this killer once you've gone through all your training they sterilise you yes um, so you don't think about anything else you've got you've got no future all you think about is killing so we're the same we're both monsters and the feminists seem to think that what just meant is any woman who can't have a baby is a monster. Uh, and that, they've attacked him. Oh, they're missing the point. Missing yes, the completely. Point. The, the fact that she's a monster is she killed without any kind of remorse. That's what she did. She was an assassin for years. Yeah, it, it's not the 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 it's not the rule is for everybody. Um, you know, if, if that was the case, if everybody was, if every woman was sterilised, would they all suddenly become monsters? You know, it's not, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's one one person's personal experience. And can you think of another direction Hollywood who's done more for female rights than Joss Whedon has? I mean, look at your... George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, more. I thought more, you said less. No, 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 I thought no, no. They, they, Michael, they haven't taken it back to the Stone Age. Michael, right, okay. Michael Bay. <laughs> Michael Bay's done so much for. Oh, I, I think they. Uh, let me see, let me see if I can think of a name. Um, poor Van <laughs> You know what? No. Showgirls is um yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's about autonomy and self determination, right? Um, okay. No, you tell me, enlighten me. Well, I can't. I think you can't. You know, any... you, you got Buffy. He always has two, you know, really strong female characters. Yeah, he does. And he, fem feminists have always sort of backed him and sort of said, you know, well, but just because well done, there's you. one case that they actually, you know, that well, they've said it, yeah. yeah. Right, it's like you're looking for some. Like, I must find something. Yeah, there must in be something in popular different. culture somewhere that will yeah. anger me. How dare you say that all oh, women who can't have babies are monsters? There's nobody said at all. Yeah, yeah, but they didn't mention her ass. You know, it's like that's fine. It's all right for for her to walk away from the camera and see her ass. But you know, it's not okay that we refer to this one personal cat, one, one, one character's personal experience of being sterilized. And then mean forced to become a killer. Uh, I, th- I, th- I think the two things are very are two separate things. Yeah. Being sterilized and then being trained to be a killer. Well, she was trained to be a killer, and then once yes. she's undergone a training, she was sterilized. So she's she's focused on the kill. On the kill. Well, she's, she's got no future. So basically, what she's saying is like, I I can't have kids. Yeah. So we can, you know, there's there's no I can't have a kid. There's no family for me. So yeah. we're the same. Not I saying think that's, 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 like, a, that's a step forward to me. That is something that's quite brave for a for a comic book character, especially to have. I mean, you yeah. would, you, you, Catwoman would never go up to Bruce Wayne and say, "Oh, by the way, I, I can't have children. I'm barren," you know, yeah. or anything like that. You know, Bruce Wayne says, "My sperm is very low." You know, it, it's it's you know, they, they you, you try and be brave and come forward with something that's a little bit out of the out of the norm, and mm. then it's attacked for being um, a, a message about all women. Well, the more yeah. I'm, I've been listening to interviews with Joss Whedon and stuff, because um, even though we loved Age of Ultron so much, I think it's got flaws. Yeah. But yeah. the flaws seem to have come from the behemoth of Marvel saying, no, Joss, you're not doing that, you're doing this. And I think he, the reason he's not going to do another Avengers film or will he do another Marvel film, I don't know, is because they put so much restraint on what he could do what yeah. he can do you know and and that's not the point I mean re- restraint in creativity is not creativity it's not art you don't you first don't... cut the film was three and a quarter hours yeah and they yeah. had to cut it down to two and a quarter so he's lost well, so hopefully that's a, lot of, that's a lot of money wasted as yeah. well 
That's but, millions. Yeah. But hopefully if we get a Blu-ray release, it might be the director's cut. That would be nice. It probably will be if they want to make money from it. If they're smart. Beef. That's the, that's the beef. That's, that's the, the cow. Beef. But anyway, oh, what we're going to talk about today is it um, Snowpiercer we're going to talk about. I thought it was John Wick. Oh. Yeah, because well, I've, I've seen them both. Have you seen them both? Yeah, I've seen them both. Okay. Well, we need to decide here. We need um, to make a decision. I know. I'll toss a coin. <laughs> Tossing a... Oh. I'll j- just a Tossing coin. a coin, I'll yeah. toss a coin. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Yep. Oh. Oh, oh, where's it gone? Hang on. Hey, did you call heads or tails? Oh, it's still pause. rolling. It's still rolling. I'm, I'm heads, heads. Okay, I'm tails. I'm, I'm, it's still rolling. It's still rolling. And... It, it stopped. Oh, it stopped on its side. That's that's impossible. Well, that's what it's done. It, it's a one penny piece. It's really thin. Oh my god! Just 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 knock it. It's still there. It's still, oh, what should, should um? Heads well, up. the gods have spoken. I guess we'll have to talk about both. 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 You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? I'm funny how. I'm Peter Vinkman. We all go a little mad sometimes. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! And we're back. Okay, so... <laughs> Welcome to Frame by Frame. Yeah. <laughs> this is Frame by Frame, right? That's <laughs> what it is. I always like the podcast where it sort of comes in, like, joining a conversation. Yeah. You know, as opposed to I was having this start. Just like that one. Yeah, that was good. So, let's start with John Wick. John Wick. I'm up. I'm up. You like that, huh? Nice ride. Thanks. How much? Excuse me? How much for the car? She's not for sale. You have a good day, sir. Daisy. I lost everything. That dog was a final gift from my dying wife. Jonathan. You got out once. You dip so much as a pinky back into this pond, you may find something reaching out to pull you back in. It's personal. Where'd you get that car? What does it matter? It's not what you did, son. It's who you did it to. The nobody? That nobody. Is John Wick. So John Wick is, um, we were just talking about assassins, he was an ex-assassin who um, mm-hmm. fell in love and managed to get away from that, and then he's, um, his wife dies, unfortunately, but on the eve of her death, she buys him a dog. And that's, um, this is uh, Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Keanu Reeves back in the action seat. And yeah, so he's got a dog. And he's would, got a really yeah. nice car that he drives fast around the track for some reason. Yes, just yes. let out. Ang- that, that's anger, his job. That's his job, right? He, he goes to work. He, then he comes home. Yeah. What is his job? He he he, he, he drives. He, test, he tests brakes on cars. Is that is that actually I, his job? I, I don't know, but because I just assumed he just took. He just was just getting anger out by driving fast. In what was nice the building? Car. Was that building the um, the armor factory where he does all that? That it, it's obviously where all, all the criminals hang out, right? Yeah. It's not just his his private garage that opens up like like the Batcave. Yeah. This is a weird building. Yeah, but... In the middle of nowhere. So, or near an airfield. So, so he's fueling up. Yeah. You see he wants to fuel his car up. And bit, um, yeah, yeah. some Russians take a liking to his car and want to buy it, but he won't sell it. Of course, yeah. Are Russians the go-to guys now for... Um, 
Arseholes? I thought this was supposed to be a, J- a Japanese martial arts. Uh, it was supposed to be like a Japanese film. Right, but, I, but, exactly. Uh, this is why I was so excited about John Wick, because I thought it was going to be... Because we know Keanu's got the moves from Matrix, and I thought, great, he's going back to his sort of kung fu... You know, he's going to be going into the town, into like a building and beating a hell of a lot of people to kung fu and stuff. And yeah, it was sort yeah. of advertised to be like that. And it, it wasn't like that. But the actual director was uh, Chad uh, Stahelski. That doesn't sound Japanese. Um, but he is a martial arts guy. The, the, the actual director is a martial arts guy. Well, he did the action choreography on uh, Matrix, I think, or was a stunt double right. of Keanu Reeves, okay. I think, on the Matrix. So he's kept in touch with them. So when they wrote this film and wanted to make it, yeah, Keanu was like, do, well, I'll do it. I want to do John Wick. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Whoa. But it was so... Whoa. But it was it was like... <laughs> it was so so built to... I thought it was going to be this great action. It was set up. Fight. It, it was, was set up to be more... This is what it, probably where the trailer was a, l- a little bit more uh, pumped up. Yeah, than, than yeah. It, but yeah. even the beginning of the film when, you know, obviously they've killed his dog and built, be, beat the shit out of um, John Wick. Which is a bit odd. Yeah, and then when, when he's like bragging off to his dad what he's done and he said, you've just done this to John Wick and he's like... Right, that's it. You're done for. Yeah. John Wick's coming for you, and he was like, "Oh God, great! Can't wait for this." There's a, a lot of weird stuff about the beginning, uh, and the, well, it's basically the last 16 minutes. Uh, the first, sorry, the first 16 minutes of this film is just full of depressing moments. Yeah. And uh, and we were reminded a lot that his wife had died. Mm. We get to we get to see her die. We get to go to the uh, the grave. He looks at pictures, he gets a cup out, and then he gets her cup, which has got the daisy on it. Mm. We know that she likes daisies, the dog, the little puppy comes along, he cries, and she's, she's written a note, this is a gift for you. And it's, but it's kind of it's kind of like so much on the nose that they could have just gotten done in about three minutes of, yes, the wife is dead. In fact, they could have just put white on black at the beginning, John Wick's wife has just died, and then just go to him going to work. Yeah, it just it seemed like they were they were just kind of way too much mood setting because either they were trying to get some sort of um, performance out of Keanu Reeves because he really wanted to really show people that he could be upset. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Or was it? Or was it just to justify the amount of people he's about to murder? Is, is it just that? Is it? Is he gonna? He's just gonna lose his shit, man. Yeah, but it, it seems. I don't know. I just kind of sat there. I was just thinking, oh my God. I mean, so now I feel sick, depressed, sick and depressed. Um, let's bury a dog. That'll cheer us up. Yeah. Let's just bury the dog. Let's see him just each, you know, yeah, each moment. And, and then I wondered if I should watch Requiem for a dream afterwards just to cheer me Just up. to cheer yourself up, yeah. Yeah, so I, I kind of felt a little bit at uh, the beginning. Yeah, up I until, Up until the Russians came in because then they lightened everything up. <laughs> <laughs> Old crazy stand-up comedian no! Russians <laughs> coming over here, killing our dogs, <laughs> taking out cars. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but yeah. So, where did it go from there after the Russian realised that he was in trouble? It just went from Keanu killing a lot of people, really. And what was the point? Retribution for killing his dog. Because I, I was trying to figure out if there was going to be some sort of tie-in to the wife as to, you know, why the wife had died. No, there's no tie-in. There's, there's just, no tie-in. No, the Russians were pricks. I made a prediction. I, I made a prediction about 20 minutes in the end of the film that right. John, John Wick killed his wife. That was my prediction. Really? Yes. I did not think that once. You given it far too. I was I was trying to kind of find because you because know, you you recommended this film to me and I thought well this is, can't just be a film about let's straightforward. Not, let's, let's shy away from the word recommendation. <laughs> I said this is getting loads of good reviews. Let's do one on action cinema. John Wick's out. Let's check it out. Okay, I'll t- I'll let you off the hook. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Because <laughs> I instantly, after watching it, because I was excited about watching the film, yeah. I thought this is going to be fucking great. It's going to be in kung fu. Were we like that about Lucy? Were we like that about Lucy? Then don't bring Lucy up. <laughs> <laughs> at least then I got to look at Scarlet, but this time I had to look at Keanu. Right, I'm going to say this in defence of Keanu. I think he's got a genuine screen presence. 
I think he's a he born can, yeah. movie star. He looks he like a movie star. He can hold the screen and yeah. he can do a lot of things with that screen. And, and he, the man has not aged in 15 years. True. He still true. looks great, you know. And he did work hard on this movie. He There's did. a lot of a lot of stunt work, a lot of professional uh, moments where you know that he's working his ass off. Yeah. And it's a personal project. This is a passion project for him. Yeah. And it's choreographed really well. Yes. It's not what I expected it to be, like long fight scenes, but they are extended scenes of gunshot, which sort of harks back to early John Woo, I guess. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's, it's basically it's like a dance. It's, it's yeah. more, more like a dance rather, and and the music is there to emphasize that. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I just didn't really connect with any part of it. Yeah, there, there was no personal reason other than the fact that we... Yes, I, I, felt, I felt as though because we were so drummed into our mind, it was so drummed into our heads that the wife had died. Mm. I focused on that too much and I thought, well, this, okay, we need to move on because that's all we're hearing. You can right, as a, you can sort of see like he's, he's lost his wife and then he's got this dog, so his dog is his main focus now. Yeah, exactly. And then he's rushing his kid. And I'm always a bit... I don't like people murdering dogs. That was, uh, yeah, I that felt, was depressing. And when you hear it squeak and you know it's dead, you're like, oh, right. And you understand, right, he's lost it. He's lost everything. That's it. I yes. don't care what happens to me. I'm just going to kill a load of Russian people. I, well, he wants to get to that guy who killed his dog, doesn't he? That's yeah. the idea. <sighs> and, and, he, and he does. I mean, and they do that very well in the fact that, that he's uh, he's constantly chasing this guy. But the thing is, the, my problem with it is that, that this guy is so inept... He he's, he's still steps he's st- steps ahead of him the whole time. Yeah. And when he actually does end up killing him, I don't remember it. I remember the chase more than the actual death. And it seems like the you know especially yeah. for the nightclub when they, he's clocked him and he's, he sees him, the guy is two steps ahead of him every time. But he just doesn't seem to be the type to be two steps ahead of John Wick every time. There's so many guys that he kills that are far more uh, proficient at their jobs than this kid. Yeah. And yet he he kind of sneaks out. It, it, it's it doesn't make sense. That didn't make sense to me. Why you couldn't just f- find him sleeping in his bed and just just, just do a starry eyed on him, yeah. you know? Um, because it, he didn't seem to be that that much of a of a person worth that was you know. No, he was, was, that a, hard he to was change. just a spoiled little shit. Who was pissed off because he didn't because somebody took his beer? <laughs> but he's not pissed off when he's actually sitting in a car in in a towel. Nobody. He didn't shout at anybody to get get clones or anything. No, he just, he's just happy to be in a car. <laughs> but yeah, what a. And then you got John Lig. What's his name? Oh, John Liguari. Liguari. Yeah, what's his name? Oh, it's it's yeah. Liguid. You know, you know what about. Oh, John John Legalzamo. John Leg Legalzamo Legalzamo Legalzamo. <laughs> yeah, John well, Legalzamo. Him. Because he's, yeah. he's a good actor, isn't he? And, um, it was such a wasted part. He just runs a, a, a chop shop. And that's it. He's just in the background. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. really have any main parts in it. Yeah, I mean, there are some, there are some parts in it that I kind of felt as though were a bit thrown away. Ian McShane, thrown yeah. away. Um, who plays Ian McShane? He plays, who plays the guy, same guy from Ro- uh, from Driftwood. Was it Driftwood? Uh, Deadwood? Deadwood. Deadwood. Yeah. Deadwood. He plays, yeah, and the same guy from Boone. And William, William Defoe probably had the most interesting ending to his life. Yeah. In, in his character, but it's still, again, it's not really, he didn't really have much to chew Did you on. see that coming? Where um, he, he paid him to kill John Wick, and by, yeah. he's just, he's basically got John Wick's back. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. That wasn't no surprise. This, that, to be honest, though, it, it didn't even surprise me that I wasn't surprised. Right. <laughs> it was like it was kind of like you know, okay, yeah, they did. They, they, let's move on. I, I've seen that before. I'm surprised that you weren't surprised that you weren't surprised. Though. But I was surprised that I, I I hadn't caught myself out from being surprised right. from not being surprised. Are you surprised that I'm surprised that I'm you, su- you weren't surprised about not being surprised? Like a Kinder egg, <laughs> like an onion <laughs> level, like, my friend. Like, <laughs> Um, okay, the, the biggest bad guy, Michael uh, Nyquist, uh, who played Vigo Tarasov, the father. Um, what did you think to him? Um, was he a big enough nemesis? I, I think he, he was. He played the disappointed father very well. 
Yeah, like Richard the, Harris did. Yeah, he mm-hmm. sort of like, oh, you know, the spoiled shit. I'm going to bail him out again. But now he's gone too far because John Wick's coming. I was kind of hoping he was going to kill him in that moment when when he was coming. That would him. have been interesting. Because it would have given him less to, to Or at least for. beat the living crap out of him. Not yeah. just slap him a few times. That's. It was kind of weird that, yeah... Uh, you, you saw that coming. You saw all the you, you know every every moment you were kind of waiting. Oh, here we go. We're gonna have a bit of a smack up now. What's that whole? You'll break my heart for all though. Is that? It's all that. It was the predictable punch a guy in the face after laughing at him. <laughs> yeah. And then hugging him, and and saying something evil in his ear. You know, we've, we've seen that in The Godfather. We've seen that exactly. Scene, yeah. yeah, you always get that sort of you. you they do I a know, hug, but they hold. Of... But they hold him. Yeah, they hold the neck and slap a few times in the yeah. face. I know it yeah. was you, Fredo. So it's yeah. I think that there's a lot of stuff in this that I've seen before, and there's a lot of stuff that I haven't seen before. The fact that every single person that John Wick actually knocks down unconscious, he then has to shoot them in the face twice. Yeah. Um, which I kind of thought was a bit, um, for for an efficient person, that's a little bit inefficient. Yeah. Use of his time and bullets. Yeah, the, the one thing I did like about it, there was no, there was no gun that had like ten thousand bullets in it. He had to keep refilling the gun, reloading the gun. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So there was a bit of realism there. Well, they had to do that because otherwise people always people are always counting the clicks. Yeah, but I'm saying in most action films now they just keep shooting and shooting, and there is no reload of, of the gun. I think the action scenes were done really well. They just weren't what I wanted them to be. Yeah. Or what I expected him to be. Maybe I'm just being a spoiled brat. I'm being the Russian kid. Maybe. I wanted magical arts. I, wanted ma- I didn't want you to... I've got Leon for that. I think I, I wanted a little more atmosphere as well. I kind of felt as though it was very dark, very claustrophobic. Mm. I wanted to kind of have... A, a, like you say, I think... We didn't want the crouching tiger hidden dragon. Magic, no. Magicism. But we wanted to have, have a little bit more something to look at that was... Like, like in the Bond films. Yeah, something a little that bit kind more. Of fighting, you know? Yeah, but every 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 fight scenario seemed like it was it was a different scenario, but the same location. It was still dark, um, and so everything felt the same going through the motions. Yeah, yeah. Like I like the one in his house when he get in his house to kill him. That was okay because it was sort of like right, he's defending his his, his castle, so to speak. And I thought right, he's going to get into some good fighting now, and it just it just didn't. It was just gunfights. But. John Wick is supposed to be something special, and he's he's the one you s- send to kill the fucking movie man. That's, yeah. that's uh, the things like yeah. I uh, I struggle with that whole boogeyman concept. Yeah, I don't think he's talking like a literal boogeyman, just like the person who can't kill. You send John Wick. To. He doesn't kill ghosts. But I think that's a real slap in the face to Chuck Norris. Now, this is one of my favorites here. When the boogeyman goes to sleep every night, he checks his closet for Chuck Norris. <laughs> We've now entered an entirely new territory. You've mentioned Chuck Norris on a podcast. Yes. <laughs> We're on the endangered species list now. <laughs> if I tag him, will we get more followers? <laughs> Sorry, what was your point there? Because I've been completely stumped on it. Um, what was your problem with the bogeyman? The concept of it, or the 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 placement of it? It it kind of felt out of place. It just jumped out as a thought. Well, it's kind of a bit unnecessary. Right. I like, just uh, I just took that yeah. as like um, yeah. you know you the, you send John Wick to kill a person and no one else will get to, can get to. That's you send John Wick for that. Yeah, but I think the bogeyman is is so not. It doesn't. It didn't raise the stakes. It didn't make him any more special. It didn't. It just kind of made made him more of like a like a fictional. I, I oh, do you know what I honestly thought of that? I thought about the Gruffalo. <laughs> <laughs> All I could think of is this creature with a wart on his face running around killing things. Um, I didn't really. I, I didn't feel as though that that. I think Keanu Reeves probably needed to have been a little bit more of a of an enigma rather than just being. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, Leon excels is where, like, Leon just walks into a police station, does what he needs to do, and then walks yeah. out without a scratch. I wanted that elite... Because that's how he's pegged as being the best of the best. That's it. I didn't get the and best. And he gets shot, and he gets... You know, he spends half the time trying to patch himself back up, doesn't he? Oh, conveniently as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, and um, I wanted... Uh, yeah, I, want, I wanted that Leon thing, where he could just... He, he is the best he walks into a place shoots the lock gets the one he needs to done he's out 
but then there's no fear I think that they they wanted to him to, they wanted him to get injured because Keanu he doesn't get injured that much in these films he doesn't but the thing is is he doesn't care anymore he's lost everything so whatever happens to him he shouldn't matter his goal is to kill that kid and then that's it it's done it should be like the Terminator basically yeah that's yeah, exactly Michael Myers sole focus is just to kill that person and then that's it that's why but I didn't, that's why I didn't feel he was uh, a strong enough threat I didn't feel as though he was uh, I mean he was choreographed to be a killer mm. like like a, a, a dan- like somebody is playing Swan Lake uh, yeah, on yeah the, they're the swan but they're not it, it's it, it's uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's him mm. it doesn't feel like him that that it was coming through. I think, like like I say, I think it had to be. And you've already said it, it's more the Michael Myers focus thing. He should have been more of a more of a spook that was just. I, I needed more angst. I think I needed more pain. Yeah, that's what it should be. John Wick isn't the person you send to kill the bogeyman. John Wick should have been the bogeyman. He should have been this mythical figure that just pops up, kills you, and disappears. You never see him. He's there, does his job, gets out. The Candyman, yeah. Yeah, not just this person who's so like, Hello, I'm John Wick, I'm going to kill you now. I just felt uncomfortable with the cultural reference being there. I think that's mainly the thing. I kind of felt as though it... it... But, so... Anyway. What would you say then? Um, It was a decent action? It was a decent action. It was choreographed very well. Um, Critics have been loving it. I mean, people have been uh, really loving this film. What what do you remember from from the whole film? What's the biggest memory of of the film apart the, the dog getting killed? That's it. Yeah, and I I kind of think that that was that was their only pivot. Even even though the action scenes were done really well, yeah, I've seen that done before, so I don't remember it very yes. well. That's it. And so and can you think of an, another action film recently where the action was memorable? Age of Ultron. Well, there's one. Yeah. Any any others where the action you you look at look at any film from any era when you think of an action film and with an action scene, which ones pop out? Which ones just? Well, I've got think things about? like Police Story, the Jackie Chan film, that whole fight scene in the end in the shopping mall is like spectacular. It's, yes. never, it's never been beaten, I don't think, in yeah. action cinema. But maybe that's what we needed. We needed more venue, different venues, something that uh, something to kind of. Uh, for the for the actual action to to be able to bend around different corners, I think I wanted more hand to hand combat. Yeah, that's it. We were too many guns, and yeah, he was already you know like someone to try and get him. He'd just get him on the floor, bang bang in his face. Next one on the floor, bang bang. You over there, bang bang. You there, bang. But there really it's wasn't. Not, a, yeah, it, it, you want that personal sort of hand to hand. Who's going to win? But the raid two, Jesus Christ! The like end fight scene in raid two is spectacular. That's what you want. That's it. That's yeah. the problem now because you've got like the raid films have sort of st- set a benchmark for action cinema, and John Wick did not come close to that. Not at all. Not at all. And and that's uh, that's uh, why I find it astonishing that it's doing so well. That yeah. it's been so popular. Um, like with Raid Two, you that end fight scene, you genuinely don't know who's going to come out best on it. You sort of you think right, the hero is going to win in the end, but. It's played so well and so brutal that you're thinking they could both die here. Yeah, there's yeah. Some, there's, there's, there's tension, you know. And that's what's needed, and I think that's what's missing is the tension. Mm. Um, because you know it's Keanu Reeves and it's John Wick, and he's going to come out of it fine. So I'd either want John Wick to have been the best of the best, where he was just he never gets touched. He just he's that good that yeah. no matter what happens, he goes into a building, he gets done. But that's the same with Lucy. I mean, not. I hate to bring Lucy in again, but what the efficiency does not create drama. Of, of being an. Well, that's what I'm saying. It has to be one or the other. It can't yeah. be both. You have to be that where he like Leon. The drama there was the little girl that he's going to look after her. Yeah. But he is that good that he's not only when it took an entire squadron of policemen to completely take over a building. Did he? Did he manage to, um, you know, that he got hit? But Would it have, he was just that yeah. good. But it, it, you either want that or you want it to be brutal and hand to hand and you're not sure if he's going to make it out yeah. of this. And what would have been beautiful with John Wick is he wouldn't have cared because he's lost everything. If he dies, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Exactly. There was no tie in. But, um, but then again, wouldn't it have be, been better if there was something that he was still fighting for? 
like in Leon, he was protecting the girl. Yeah, he, he had was. a reason to mm. to live, but then he also there was also a reason for there to be enough jeopardy for him to die because she would be left in the end of the film to carry it on, you know, in his memory. Yeah. So that's usually the case if there if there's somebody else if, if there's two if there were two people in this film, it probably would have been better. Mm. If if it was John Wick and. I have no idea, but if there was some, if there was some something that he was invested in, that there was a reason why he was doing it, um, maybe the dog was kidnapped, not killed. Yeah. But then what's the point in kidnapping a dog? It's not, it's not dramatic enough for him to kill that many people because of that. It's. It, but that then was, it, it would have been because if he's projected his lover of his wife onto that dog. Onto that dog, yeah. So that dog essentially in his head would have been his wife. Yeah. So. That you'd be fighting for her, so that would yeah, that would have been better. Yeah, I'm and thinking, it, yeah, and with all films, it's like they're not they're not make, It's like we're making a film in the hope that we can make a lot more because John Wick Two's been announced. It has been announced. So it? every film now is like, well, we can't kill them off at the end because we can make more money out of this and make a few more John Wick films. So yeah, 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 yeah exactly, and that's that's not good. Because that that just creates a franchise of brain dead action films. Exactly, and that's why Leon is such a it's, it's so good. Nobody because, made a sequel. No, because he's dead. He's dead, and you don't expect him to die. I never expected him to die when the first time I watched. It, I thought he's going to live. He's that good, and then when he dies, and then you got Natalie Portman at the end, who yeah. is, who lives and lives on. And when she plants the plant, and it's heartbreaking, and, it's, and she's sort of on her own now, but you know she's going to be okay. You remember and... so much from that film, though. I remember the pig hand puppet I yeah. love that and yeah. the milk and the cigarettes and there's so much in that film that I pulled from it that I remember mm. and it was uh, it, there's comfort because you kind of feel as though she lived on and they, they did want to make a professional too they wanted her to be uh, the assassin there yeah. was that idea of, of there being Leon too but it wouldn't be it would be the professional um, but Natalie yeah. Portman have never agreed to do that mm. um, and yeah so Again with John Wick, it's just not going to be a very. Uh, it's not going to be a franchise that I want to invest in. No, no, absolutely not. Because I said at the end, actually, uh, you know, because he gets a new dog. Conveniently, he's in a place where there's a dog pound. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that. You know, is you know, it could have been ice cream. It would have been better if it was just walking down the street and eating ice cream. Well, cause, yeah, it could have been anything. The very start of the film, he tr falls out of that. The car smashes into that thing. He falls yeah, out, yeah, and he's half yeah. dead. And you think, oh Jesus, what's happened? And then when it finally the film catches up to that moment, he just stands up and walks off. Yes. <laughs> I mean, what's all that about? I mean, yeah, that that end, that, that beginning was. Uh, I, I don't like that. I don't like seeing that. It it it, it bores me. I, they did it with payback. Yeah, yeah, they did. And, and I I've mentioned payback already before because this this film is exactly the same yeah, as Doctor John Wick, but I thought payback was a, a much stronger film. It was because it wasn't. Advertised as being anything other than what it was, and the the characters were so funny, they were yeah. genuine and, and ingenuous, and you had you had something. It was it was like he was going on a journey. Yeah. Whereas John Wick's just going around around a, the the same roundabout. He's he's on a roundabout that's just going around the motions, and see, coming out at the end until he's had enough. See, if John Wick had had Lucy Liu in bondage gear, I would be I would have been a much better film. And Greg Henry just just. You know, having I mean, the crap being out of him, yeah, and, uh, yeah, I, I would have enjoyed that. I mean, the the, the characterization. I mean, I mean, a lot of d nasty stuff happens in that film. I mean, the guy gets his toes yeah. smashed up, his girlfriend commits suicide, um, <laughs> his ex, who used to be a, 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 um, a, a, she used to be a, what was it? What do you call them? Lady of the night? <laughs> yes, prostitutes. Um, no, no, but there was the upper class ones. The uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know the uh, lingo because I just don't do it. <laughs> not, it's not something I type into Google very much. Really? <laughs> I'm I, not interested in the high class ones. I want the ones that are on the street corners, full yeah. of AIDS. That's the ones I like. Yeah, Mario Bello played the uh, yeah the play like a madam, a, a madam, yeah. a courtesan kind of thing <laughs> that's good but let's go to the 16th century and call it how it is Moulin Rouge and Mel Gibson used to drive her and he, he used to he just lived around seediness but in that seediness was some pretty good funny stuff yeah no, absolutely and I kind of I, I was all I was thinking about throughout this movie was, was I want to watch Payback again mm. I was thinking I want to watch Leon again well, that's, well let's watch some, I want to watch Leon again too yeah, yeah that would be interesting director's part. got very interesting yeah Oh, I haven't seen that. Ooh. Well, have you seen the director's cut of Payback, though? 
No. Straight up. Both of those films have director's cut that came out years later and they're very interesting, very different. Ooh. Straight up. Check it out. Could there be a possible podcast? Maybe on this? there is. I think there is. I think this is interesting. Yeah. I think it's too too good a, an opportunity to miss. Right. Because neither of us has seen the other person's uh, director's cut, so. Interesting. I'm happy with that. Yeah, good. Cult classic. I've got. Have you got any problems with that being assigned to John Wick? Yes, it's not a because, cool film. <laughs> because so many people on Amazon, uh, not Amazon, sorry, the International Movie Database, yeah. have been saying that, uh, oh, this is destined to be a cult classic. <sighs> oh, this is a classic in the making. Um, it's made money. It's actually had an uh, international release. It has backers. It has promotion. We've spoken has... at great length, though. Cult cinema does not mean what cult cinema no, means. No, same as epic or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, this, this is kind of like, like, yeah. like the word awesome. You know, I said, why, man, your socks are awesome. If they were, you'd be like, I can't speak because of, because of the cock. <laughs> It'd be awesome. It's awesome. But I was like, wow, man, red and blue socks. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, it has no meaning whatsoever. Oh, that Big Mac is awesome. If it was, you wouldn't be able to breathe. You'd die because of it. You just can't comprehend how can't... awesome it is, you know. Uh, but yeah, I said that it cannot be a cult because you, 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 if you think a lot of people don't like it and it has been shunned by mainstream, um, the money speaks for itself. It's not a cult. Mm. It's got to be shunned. It's got to be on the ground. It's basically people have got to forget about it and then it just ripples out Yeah, and surfaces again. That's a cult film. Exactly. Twin Peaks by Waterman is a cult film because people didn't like it when it came out. Yeah. And then it slowly started to The Room is a cult film. It's it, a shit film, it's, but yeah. It's, it's a cult film. Okay. Because, yeah, right, yeah. because people love it. They've even got bobbleheads now, but they didn't when it first came out. They hated it. You know, you know what is a cult film? Mad Max. Hmm. Yes. Remake. Well, is it reimagined yeah, it's, rather than remake? It's, yeah, it is kind of reimagined Tom Hardy. Um, but that, what do you think of trailer? I we could John Wick enough time though. Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> John Wick. Um, I I'm actually excited about this film. I know you are, and I don't know why, but there's something about. I mean, it's still George Miller. Yeah, it, he's gone mainstream. He's got a lot more money. Um, but George the thing, Miller. The the thing is about the Mad Max films is that they are specifically done. You know, in a way that they're magnificently done. Yeah. It's about the car chases. It's about the dirt. It's about the ruggedness. It's about the torture. It's it's about the. the yeah. it's have, about you, have you seen the, the trailer? Yeah, it's it's apparently all that. There's like I have a very little, no CGI in, her, in most of that. Well, that's the thing. G- George Miller does not like CGI. Yeah, and he refuses. Those are stunt guys for the most part. I mean, there's there's got to be moments where he's going to say, "Okay, there's no way we can actually throw that guy through an engine fan." Um, mm. Let's let's CGI that. But it's... what you could do is you get a homeless man and just do it. There's what there's one underneath the uh, the underpass on the way to work this morning. Right, good. We'll just use an homeless man. Should I just tag him? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's bring great. Mr. Miller up and just say we've yeah. got a guy he'll do it. <laughs> yeah, he's the ultimate fall yeah. guy. Take the CGI out and just shove a homeless man in. But that's yeah. it. I mean, I I love George Miller. I love his the, the Mad Max films. I grew up on them, and I don't. It's because it's set in Australia it's dirt there's there's nothing that they can really F up even if it is just a, a, a really stupid film a chase film with a lot of stupid dialogue mm. there's nothing I'm not, I don't expect anything more than that because it's so brilliant because of that and yeah. it, it, that that's me rising to the surface and saying I don't care what, what happens underneath I'm there to have a good time and that's uh, that's kind of hopefully yeah. what I'm going to get out of it yeah. what do you reckon? I, I thought the trailer was just really manic and full of people I'm going to find incredibly annoying. Yeah, well, that's that's the point. But yeah, I know it's the point. You, you've seen the first, <laughs> you've seen the first Mad Max film. A long right? time ago, I don't remember it. But, well, the Night Rider, the Night Rider. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, there were stupid characters in that. Yeah, there was the stupid guy who danced with a mannequin in Mad Max Two. There was a feral kid. I mean, he he was fun, he, he awesomely. Awesomely stupid. Um, there was. <laughs> I can't breathe because he's so stupid. <laughs> There's there was some really dodgy dialogue in that, and then you got Tina Turner in the third one, and that really annoys you. But the thing is, these characters are annoying because that's that's the society that's going to be like in a post-apocalyptic society that no, yeah. nobody's going to have any kind of straightforward uh, common sense uh, personality they're all okay. going to be messed up and I like that I'm reserving judgement but you just said something there <laughs> what? oh I said awesome 
Post-apocalyptic. Post-apocalyptic. What else have we seen recently that's set in a post-apocalyptic world? Well, we, we flipped the coin. See what I did then? <laughs> yeah. That was a link. Yay! Snow Piercer. Yeah. Right. A circular railway that extends for 438,000 kilometers and completes one circle every year. Passengers, as in the beginning, I belong to the front. You belong to the tail. Keep your place. Curtis. Is the time? Now isn't the time. But when is the time? Soon. Are you Nam Goodman Su? Security specialist? We control the engine, we control the world. This time we take the engine. Then what? We kill him. How, how did you get on with Snowpiercer? I think I enjoyed it. I do not. It's a funny thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's like you don't know if you want to enjoy it or not. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, yeah. <laughs> I actually liked it. I'll be honest with you, I liked it. It's different. I thought it was good. It was actually something I don't think I'd seen, really. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of felt like so many other things mm. but didn't feel like so many other things it kind of it, it owns itself yeah in a, in a kind of a, there's a little bit of Hunger Games in there there's a bit of Schindler's List in there there's a there's a bit of uh, s- snow <laughs> there's, there's, there's snow there's but, lots of snow go, go on then you set it up okay well it, it's it's the future and the the air is toxic and they're transporting uh, for some reason they're transporting uh, people on this this magical train <laughs> well it was the guy who created this toxic thing it was supposed to just because it wasn't the world overheating so they put this into the atmosphere That's to right, cool it down to cool it down and, it and the guy who up. did it had invented this train that basically never stops does it it's, or... a, per- it's a perpetual train that yeah. goes around the world uh, uh, which is it's a, it's a it's a surreal magical kind of an idea really i mean it's yeah. it's, it's not uh, it's not based in any sense of reality whatsoever but it's which is fun, not a bad thing that's but fine. it's a fun because once you accept that you can accept everything else that yeah. goes on and um basically the people who were lucky enough to be on this train are the only survivors of, of the of the planet and of course for any society to to work they have to have all different personalities all different types of people You've got your engineers, you've got your teachers, you've got your, your, your clever fanatics, you've got your um, your wealthy leaders, and uh, and you've got your bottom feeders. It's on the nose, isn't it? But, I mean, like, yeah. every carriage in this train is um, a metaphor for the class system that we have. Yes, exactly. You and know. and I think you're sold on the surreal magic of it all, that you kind of accept the stereotypes that you're being delivered, Yeah, I think. Yeah, Would, I think you, would so. you agree with I that? I agree with that completely, yeah. The original graphic novel for this, Le Chirurgie, yeah, Chinese. It's, it's French. <laughs> Le Chirurgie, um, yes, Snowpiercer. Yes, Snowpiercer. Um, it's um, it's a very different. It's very different to the film, the actual original, and what it's based on. Right. The okay. train is a normal train. It could have just been the Pennine Way train. It could have been. It could have been Virgin train going down to London. It yeah, it wouldn't, just it wouldn't have been a perpetual train that would have been breaking down all the time. <laughs> but that's it. The train in that in that graphic novel was just a normal train. Right, okay. And that that's what's so phenomenal about what, what they did with this film is that they the, the director, Yong Ho Bong, yeah. Bong had an opportunity to to play and to play with with so many different ways. I mean, this 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 must be. It, he must have learnt so much about the craft of filmmaking from this film. If he hadn't already gotten a resume already of, of, mm. of so many films, this this is a great learning experience because for every carriage that he goes into, there's different lighting setting. There's different. Um, different hues. Yeah. There's 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 different dress. There's different costumes. I mean, everybody who was on that job. I don't think anybody could have gotten bored because mm. every carriage was a complete redress. Yeah. And uh, the, and it's completely new. I mean the editor must have loved it because there's just something new in every single carriage. Good. I've never what else has the director done? The, is he Japanese? I believe he is. Yeah. Or Cause obviously there's no, lots Korean. Of, he's South Korean. Korean. 
<laughs> he's directed 14 movies. Um, he did Mother. Oh my god, are they here to get me? It's Chuck Norris. <laughs> he's really pissed off now. <laughs> yeah. He did uh, Mother, Tokyo, uh, The Host. Oh, that's that a host. fantastic film. Influenza short. Uh, digital Why did I know? Short. I knew that. I, forgot, I knew that I knew he directed the host he does a lot of short films uh, Memories of Murder Barking Dogs Never Bite um, short films he's, he's, he does a lot of short films as well so he's probably out of 14 he's made about 5 well the host six. is a really good film I really enjoyed that that's alright and he's he's an editor as well he's, he's also acted in a couple of things um, he's written 14 things as well and not everything he's directed as well so he's he's definitely still he's 45 years old um so he's still kind of midway in his career yeah absolutely you're not old lady now so he gets what 75 is yeah exactly well yeah. You, you know look at Woody Allen yeah let's not let's, let's, look, look let's at, look, just look at him <laughs> yeah what happened it's a caricature of himself now isn't it he? he really is but yeah I mean but I, I looked at this film and I kind of just I couldn't wait for them to open the next door and to the yeah. next door and next door and I, I think that was fascinating I, I, I struggled a little bit at the beginning um, because and, until they actually broke out and started that journey yeah I kind of thought well is, is this going to be kind of like the gods of men or is it, is right, it just yeah. going to be a little is this going to be it but I was just pleasantly surprised um, when they did the, the torch the, the flame torches scene when it was pitch black and uh, yeah night vision and, and yeah I think it was it was definitely a fun film it did keep you entertained it did and I think there were some like really cool characters in it yes. that that woman you know the is she got like a Manchester accent? Oh, the te- is it the teacher? Not the teacher. The, oh, no, 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 no. the woman oh. that she's sort of like a spokesman, isn't Tilda she? Tilda Swinton. Was that Tilda Swinton? That was Tilda Swinton. Yes. Oh wow! Her, but, and she based her character on a Yorkshire accent. Yorkshire, right? Okay. Passengers, this is not a shoe. This is disorder. This is size ten chaos. When I first talked to director Bong about being in the film, I pointed out to him that there wasn't actually a part for me. <laughs> and then he went away and came back and asked me to look at the part of Mason, which still in the script is referred to as a mild-mannered man in a suit. No, I can help you. I swear it. Listen, listen to me. Wilford won't come here. He's not coming. You've got to go to him. And I can take you. I know the train. Uh, uh, so, I thought she was so funny. Yeah. And quirky and brilliant. I really, yeah, I really liked her. I know you're not meant to like her. I just thought she was humorous. Yeah. I think there were two I think there was uh, two politicians that she based her characterization on. One of them was Margaret Thatcher, I think. Right. She was definitely there. And somebody else. Well, you can no get idea. the sort of stone face. Thing no, of no, 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 the the one that yeah, the, the so you can do horrible things and not just not care. You know yes. when they make that poor guy stick his hand out. That I think I think that was the hook. That was a good hook. That was definitely mm. an Act One setup hook. You know to realize that you know these are bottom feeders and they can do whatever they want with them. Yeah, because when you find out what they've actually been eating, which is just ground up insects made into those black bricks, yeah. that's what they've been eating. That's for like solid and green. There's so many references that you can mm. pick and bring on. If if they were actually eating themselves, that would have been really intense. Been but then up. there was cannibalism involved in this story. Yes, yes, there was. Yes, yeah. and that that kind of sets up the character, the main character played by Chris Evans, who didn't look like Chris Evans. No, he did really, really good. He's he, a good actor. Do you know who he looked like? He looked more like the guy from the American Sniper. What was his name? Bradley Cooper. Bradley. He looked. I kept on looking at him, thinking, "It's not Bradley Cooper. It's not Bradley Cooper. It's he, the other guy." He reminded me of Kurt Russell out of um, the thing. There's that. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. this would have been a really interesting. Um, uh, who who? Oh, man. John Carpenter. Jumping, it would have been a really interesting John Carpenter. Film. It's got a sort of vibe. Yeah. It's got a Carpenter vibe to it, definitely. Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he did he did really well in this. Hmm. I think he's um, a talent to watch. In every film I've seen him in, he's completely different. Yeah. You know, he's really. I think he's a good, he's a Chameleon. really good actor. Yeah. There aren't that many. Uh, there aren't that many method actors these days who kind of get lost in the roles as as. 
as much as they used to. I mean, no. there's no, there's no, there are no standout De Niro, Al Pacino's, or uh, there's no standout. Um, I mean, Edward Norton is still Edward Norton. <laughs> there's nothing to kind of look at and go, who's that? I mean, you did that with Tilda Swinton just then. Who is that? I, yeah, I thought of when yeah. I was watching. I thought, is that Tilda? No, it's not. It's not Tilda Swinton. But there aren't that. It's many... those big glasses. You know, it's hard to tell it's her. But... That's it. There aren't. There aren't that many um, characters. Uh, that I've seen in the last ten years that have kind of made me think, who is that? Who is the actor? Mm. Uh, what did you think of Jamie Bell, the kid? Yeah, he was all right, Jamie Bell. Yeah, he did the same character that he did in um, Filth, basically. Really? Yeah, really? Similar sort of obnoxious kind of. Is he is he kind of going through the motions of getting his career uh, in, into the direction that he needs to go? Because since Billy Elliot. Maybe, yeah. Goodness. It was in Filth, is he which tr- is a film you really need to see. Um, yeah. for... Okay. The guy out of Filth, um, James McAvoy, he's the right. guy who gets lost in a role. Yes. You watch Filth, and that is a masterclass in acting. Okay. It's astonishing. Like, yeah. through um, just one scene, he goes through being this like guy who's really apologetic, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry for being this, and then he just changes, and he's this fierce, angry man. He was just messed up. Well, that's nice to see a little bit of. Oh, yeah. he's honestly one of the best performances I've ever seen. Really, it's filth. that that good. Add that to your uh, list. Yeah, filth. filth. We'll do one on filth. Okay. Whoa, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exciting beef. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the, 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 what was a feral cat. <laughs> Give me your angry. <laughs> Right. Okay. Ed, Ed Harris was the main bad guy at the end. What did you think to the ending of this of this film? Did, were you surprised that he was actually being penned to become the next? I wasn't expecting it. Even no. though he was a leader, he's a, you know everyone looked up to him and he was a leader. I wasn't expecting that. The twist the that he's actually being set up to become the leader of the train because yeah. you know, um, but the fact that he actually derailed it by cutting off his own hand. Yeah. And yeah. And the, the, those I mean, I was I, I wasn't surprised that he died at the end. No, he derailed it. Yeah, so does everybody die? I think a lot of people died, and I think to the the main the main kid that they were trying to that Octavia Spencer was, was the mother for, um, which I was surprised that she died. Yeah, I kind of thought what well, she needed to be with the kid, but then the whole idea of this is is that the kid actually goes on and, and, and repopulates the earth with that Korean girl mm. and the polar bears. And, uh, yeah, you just got to... Yeah, so, so, some yeah. surprise moments. Were you actually. okay with those two Korean guys, you know, the bloke and the girl? Uh, being psychic, perhaps? She can sort of see what's behind the door before they open it. I kind of ignored that. I didn't even Did know you? that was going on. Right, okay. Because um, he's like the, the tech wizard who knows how to open all the doors and she's sort of psychic, isn't she? And she can sense... What's yeah, I, I kind of just zoned. I I think I really zoned out on those moments. I didn't even notice them. I, I was, all right. <laughs> I think I was too busy. Talent. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's that's probably what it is. Yeah. I don't yeah. <laughs> wow. When you watch a Transformers film, it must be just a blank canvas for two hours <laughs> and just staring at like static on the TV screen. You go, oh, was it on? All right. <laughs> okay. No, I didn't, didn't notice anything. I honestly did not notice. Maybe that there was a moment where I was distracted and I just missed it but right. uh, yeah yeah that sounds bad that's terrible I ought to watch it again so that I can uh... I that, well that, funny you say that it is a film I'll see again yeah so piercer just yeah. to kind of have in the background while you're doing the dishes or something yeah doing the dishes because dishes are a beautiful thing yeah like a forest like a forest so yeah um, interesting ending mm-hmm. he dies I think I think the moment you get that story that he was going to eat, eat that child it was going to eat a baby yeah because it killed the mother and uh, she tasted good and then he wanted to have the baby and then he it was it was Jamie Bell who he was going to eat yeah <laughs> and Jamie Bell had already died and I can't yeah you can't, he dies in that like battle scene yeah it? and you add it all together and you think yeah he's not going to survive at the end of this he, he, he can't there's, there's that one interesting bit isn't there where um, it's between choosing Jamie Bell or getting that woman isn't it and yes. he chooses to get the woman Jamie Bell dies yeah, and then yeah. I thought, oh, there's a darkness in this guy. Yeah, he sacrifices his friend to carry on 
his journey through the train and that is done really well i think the whole left to right thing mm. um because you, you get a sense that you know that uh, that you, you're always looking at the train on from one angle even mm. though they go around the train from different angles all the time you never you, you, but you always know where you are you always know that left is back right is forward yeah and they do that with every uh, for every step of the way as soon as there's a moment where he he's not too sure he will look left or go left move left yeah and as soon as there's that uh, need to push forward he will look right move right that's very uh, interesting there, there's there's a lot of that and that that was very conscious decision i think yeah. in the director to, to to maintain that throughout and i think it, it's, it's something that i just noticed that every move forward was right so if that had been me i would have got to the middle and i thought i'm all right here i'll stay here I'm yeah in the middle in the middle yeah was it what was give, me, give me a copy of the guardian i'm uh, nice and liberal now yeah yeah because you don't want to be in the sleeper yeah carriage because <laughs> that's just a you know yeah i'd say i like that yeah i like the carriage <laughs> when they're all naked and stuff that was cool <laughs> that was cool that never happens on Virgin ever <laughs> no but then I'd been like don't look at me buddy I'm fat <laughs> I'd be like look, look at my toes these are toes <laughs> yeah oh but yeah it was every, every, every carriage was a picture but uh, yeah aliens <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, were, but um, yeah no surprises no sequels I don't think for this no <laughs> that doesn't be um, so okay. but yeah so it's a Weinstein company produce film yeah and um it, i think it did fairly well in america it got released in america it did very well mainly because captain america is like the main guy in it but they wanted millions to distribute it into britain and people weren't saying well no we're not going to pay for that you know it's too much money so um it's still not really been distributed here and it's sort of in the no man's land about being about even they've come into this country that's weird it's that's very a... weird in this day and age it is it's, it's it has been released on dvd though um on amazon but it is incredibly short-sighted and and i mean its budget was 39 million dollars 40 right. million dollars it only grossed 4 million so would it have been worth investing in that worldwide release well yeah well that they've they've obviously well, maybe, fallen short here well they have but maybe if they'd like let it you know not be as greedy as distributing it and let the box office figures speak for itself because you've got captain america as the star so people will be yeah. will gravitate towards it but that didn't that. happen that didn't happen this is quite a flop they're circling again go on chuck yeah so it flopped it flopped i thought it did really well in its opening but it actually only did one hundred and seventy one thousand. So it was lost a lot, and it cost what forty million to make. Forty million. Uh, so it basically only made ten uh, percent of its um, budget. That's that's a shame, uh, and I think that that's obviously because of, of the distribution problem. So, as a collective society, we only like dystopian future films if it's led by a woman. Is that right? Is this Must your be. theory? Hunger Games. Okay. Yeah. Dead Virgent. Divergent, yeah. I suppose the Maze Runner was a guy as well, but there's a girl in it as well. Resident Evil. No, are they dystopian futures? They're zombie uh, films, really, aren't they? Yeah, but it's on the ground. Everybody dies by the fourth one, I think. Yeah. And I think that then it becomes dystopian. Um, whatever, whatever films. Mad Max. That was yeah, that, yeah. Mel Gibson's such a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah but it's amazing how a lot of those films get distributed if this one doesn't I mean how many other films to get held, held back I know there's a film that nobody's seen over here a Vietnam War film called A Soldier's Sweetheart right. and I can't get it on I can't get it I, I actually have the, the, the VHS from America in, in that box over there of A Soldier's Sweetheart yet yeah, I can't get it anywhere else Mm. driving me crazy it's a, it's a Kiefer Sutherland film it was it was quite an interesting film it's not, the, not a brilliant film right. but I'm just surprised that it's just not over here but yeah this is just another another um, another uh, um, another film that's just not made it strange isn't it John Wick does really well and Snowpiercer doesn't where's the justice John Wick yeah I it, it's a weird world it's a weird world Maybe it's this. I don't know what what's the problem with it. I mean, it's got Jamie Bell in it. It's got Tilda Swinton in it. There was a British interest um, mm. people right there. Oh, and of course John Hurt. Oh, John Hurt's in it. Of course, the, the British interest is there. 
any one of those could have just come on to on 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 a on a circuit and just done some interviews and they would have gotten at least mm. at least half their budget back i don't know i don't know what would have what would you predict did he um, get a korean release being a korean director um it probably did but it doesn't have that information here um but yeah yeah korea it was it was released in korea South Korea on the 1st of August. The, it, um, it basically did France, uh, Japan, China, the Netherlands, um, United States, Australia. United Kingdom, it did release on uh, my birthday last year. It's all about me. Um, Edinburgh International Film Festival. So it's just gone into festival. It's just gone into festival and that was it. Um, yeah, and the last place it was uh, released was in Hungary um, last month. Well, maybe those hungry figures will start rolling in. <laughs> right, so I think we're we're done with uh, Snowpiercer. Anything else? I think, no, say? I think you said what I wanted to say. So, out of the two films we discussed, I would say Snowpiercer is the far better. Yeah, I one. think so. I agree, and I, I, I'm surprised that a, tr- a film based on a train, wholly on a train, uh, could do so well without Steven Seagal in it. Without Steven Seagal or Gene Hackman, yeah, um, narrow margin reference, yeah, there. yeah, or old Meredith Salinger, yeah, or Unstoppable with uh, Chris Pine and Denzel Washington. Have you ever seen that? Unstoppable. Oh yes, that was a that's great. A, that's, that's a good, good film. film. Very that's, good film. Yeah, or uh, what other train films? I mean, I mean, Under Siege Two was really not, it's not dreadful. That, that was awful. Um, I think we should. I think we should review it though. <laughs> yeah, let's do it now. Don't watch it. <laughs> Oh my god, the ridiculous. End. I like Under Siege 1 though. Yeah. It's a good film. But That's Under right Siege though. 2, it just, it just went totally in the wrong direction. That The bad guy in that was just ridiculous. Yeah. But however, Catherine Hager was in it, and that was, you know, she was young and not as obnoxious. Yeah. Um, but um, there we go. That the guy out of Twin Peaks in it, didn't he? Oh, wasn't that uh, the. Uh, that was in Under Siege 2. I forget his name now, but he was like. I'm scared of him. I'm scared of him, and I like it. <laughs> you got some perverse pleasure out of Steven Scal beating the crap out of him, and the fact that you remember that line from Under Siege Two is is it's amazing. Well, that's see, Steven Seagal would have been good at, as John Wick because Steven Seagal <laughs> never gets hurt. Does exactly, he? he's a superhuman. He just like anyone comes up to him, yeah, you're on the floor. He comes I've up never, to him again, you're back on the floor. I've never seen him actually um, get get sewn up by a, by an underground doctor. No. He doesn't need that. He's no. Steven Seagal. That's amazing. I mean, at least Jean Claude Van Damme really gets battered. Yeah. And, and, well, by the end of his film, he's either just blind, deaf, or legless. Yeah. Well, actually, never legless because he has to spread them at the end if he's holding them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But you know, he's spread one of those legs, <laughs> Claude Van Damme. <laughs> But they're all making comebacks now. You notice they're all making kind of like big, big box office films again. Yeah, well, it's everyone apart from Seagal. Well, Seagal's busy. Um, what, what's he doing? I don't, did he do that TV series? <laughs> no. Was it? Was it? Um, I, don't know. I just like that Jackie Chan's never gone away. Jackie Chan's just done a film with John Cusack. He doesn't age. No. Jackie like Chan is is. I'm I'm 36. I can't do what he does. He's what? He's he's too big to be 60 soon. Yeah, he's remarkable. What a Jackie guy. Chan. I want to is... do a podcast just on Jackie Chan. He's, he's my childhood hero. Yeah, we, we, yeah, absolutely. We can, we can do that. There's a few good films that I've seen of his. Yeah, Drunk the old ones. Too. It's still. I don't remember the titles, but I just remember the fights. Yeah. Uh, there's a fight on paper where he's tearing the paper up underneath him. I think it's it's beautiful. It's yeah. poetry. Oh, he's just a yeah. yeah. I one thing that was him. missing from Jackie Chan's filmography is one where he just gets pissed off. You know, I wanted that. Rumble so in the Bronx. It... What happened to Rumble? No, he didn't. He didn't get. He just got rumbled. Yeah. yeah well, he sort of gets a bit pissed off with that, but he still the because... tuxedo. <laughs> yeah, he, he pretty ripped the the scene. Oh, oh my god! Really yeah. angry. <laughs> but you know, oh. one where someone's like just. It sounds awful to say, but someone's just like right, killed his best mate and he loses his he doesn't shit. Get, he doesn't get the police. He's gonna, no, stuff. he's going to have the comedy all the time. Yeah, yeah, but and I always wanted one where he just fucking pissed off and beats the. You know, Angry Chan. 
Yeah, I suppose he doesn't play story where he gets a bit angry and then just smashes all the glass and you know. Yeah. Anyway, we're off subject. Well, that's fine. I mean, we, we can we can hit Jackie Chan, but he's going to hit you back. Yeah. Um, another time. Um, we, we see see we, we've come back. I mean, it has been a while since we've well since uh, with Age of Ultron. Mm-hmm. Been two weeks. Two weeks. Even though we we put Enfield out afterwards. Yeah. Um, it has been a while since we've done a podcast, and it's been it's like we're going back to old times. We didn't lose. We're not lost. It's fine. What? We're good. We haven't lost the thing. We still got our chance. Yeah. Well, you don't yeah. lose this. This is this, this is, is this, this is, is stuff from birth. You know what I mean? Granite. It's just yeah, there. It's um, solid. Vibranium. Is that a thing? Is that like fibrology? That's what um, Captain America's shield's made out of, and that's yeah. what Ultron would like coats himself in, so he's virtually indestructible. I would love for there to be a superhero that uses the L'Oreal product, fibrology, and actually makes their hair like an indestructible weave. That can cut through walls. Have you ever seen the Peter Serovinovich show? No. He has this really great skit on it where this guy's just got one hair and he has this special uh, hair product for his one hair. <laughs> You'll have to put that in at the end to end with. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> You'll find it, honestly. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> when you've only got one hair, you need to look after it. Rick Delane talks about new Elvine One Hair. My hair was unmanageable. No matter what I did, it would end up looking dry and tangled. My hair was a mess. Elvine One Hair's concentrated formula is designed to strengthen your hair, nourishing your hair from root to tip. It's specially designed for people who only have one hair, like me. Now my hair is soft and shiny, and no tangles. I love what you've done with your hair. What's your secret? Well, that's between me and my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Look after your hair with new Elvine One Hair. Right. Okay, brilliant. Been good to see you. you yes, yeah, thank you. You, you, not you, yeah, but you, yeah, thanks for listening. And all of you, thanks for listening. Yeah, till next time, cheerio. Be careful, it's a jungle out there. You know, I I want to take this opportunity to, to let the people know how they can contact our friends at Frame by Frame. They do that podcast. You thing. know, the two guys, yeah, they do the podcast, okay? So they're, how? They're, they're nice, to the like a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Exactly. And so if you want to, to, to do the communicating thing, you know, the social networking uh, thing. Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, you can tweet those guys tweet? at Frame by Frame 78. If you'd like to go to their website, that will be www. Roastingportions.com. Hey, hey, hey. You don't need to do the www. It's implied that it's going to be the World Wide Web. Well, people need to know that. Okay, just go to roastedportions.com. Okay, you go down on the right hand side. You've got the social connections. You can you can talk to the people who do the show. You can even talk to uh, uh, the people who made that movie. You know, CACO3. Who'd want to talk to those mooks? I don't know. They made a pretty interesting movie, right? Yeah. It was in black and white. Yeah, black and white. I yeah, like you know, that. We like black and white because, and there was also some trees in that movie too. Oh, trees! It's like like being in a forest is a beautiful thing. Other connections, you can really get to know these people on YouTube as well. And if you want to comment on their on their podcast, I urge you to do that. Okay. Yeah, I think it is a, a proper, really nice thing if people want to start contacting these Subscribe guys. Subscribe to them and then and com- comment. I mean, it's just just polite, you know. Also, you can email them at framebyframe78 at gmail dot com. That's it. I think that's everything wrapped up. So, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and plant a tree somewhere. Okay, you go plant some trees. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna go, go plant a tree. I'm gonna go tweet. You tweet. I'll plant a tree. It's us, we're out of here.